Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories, let's start to story. AITA for moving away with my sons after winning full custody and leaving their mom behind? Last year, my wife and I went through a rough divorce. Our relationship completely fell apart after she was charged with felony credit card fraud. She eventually pled guilty to a lesser charge, but the damage was already done. During our marriage, she was a stay-at-home mom to our two sons, who are now five and three. Unbeknownst to me, she had been taking out credit cards in my mom's name and using them to fund her spending habits. When I found out, it felt like my world crumbled. I work full-time and make a decent living, but I would never have imagined that my wife was capable of something like this. The day the police showed up at our door with a warrant, taking her away in handcuffs and confiscating two laptops as evidence, was the day I knew our marriage was over. The betrayal was too deep. Once I got the full story, I didn't waste any time I filed for divorce immediately. Now, I want to be clear, despite her criminal actions, my ex-wife was a good mom. She did try to justify what she did, saying it was all for the kids, but that's hard to swallow when she never mentioned needing anything. Anytime she asked to buy something, I almost always said yes. But she chose this path, and it destroyed my trust in her. When I filed for divorce, I also asked for full custody of our sons. She begged me not to do it, insisting that she needed her kids, but she was looking at up to a year in jail. Even with her lawyer's best efforts, the judge wasn't convinced she should have anything more than supervised visitation. In the end, she did 90 days in jail, paid fines and restitution. I've allowed her to see our sons nearly every time she asked, despite everything. The last year has been incredibly tough, but we've managed to get by. A few months ago, I was offered a much better job opportunity in another state, which could significantly improve our lives. I consulted with my lawyer about the legal implications of moving with my sons and was informed that since I have full custody, I needed to file a petition with the court to relocate. When I told my ex about the job and my plan to move, she lost it. She accused me of stealing her children and said she would fight me tooth and nail to keep them close. I understood her anger, but I knew I had to do what was best for our sons. So I filed the petition, got the court's approval, and accepted the job. When the judge ruled in my favor, my ex broke down in tears. It was heartbreaking to watch, and it made me question myself. I knew in my head that I was doing the right thing for my boys, they're young enough that the move shouldn't be too traumatic, but their lives have already been turned upside down, and I'm adding even more upheaval. As for my ex, she's been an emotional wreck. She's begged me to reconsider the move, trying everything from guilt trips to emotional manipulation. It's like she's going through the stages of grief, and I can understand why. But from my perspective she brought this on herself. She lied, she broke the law, and as much as it pains me to say it, I have very little sympathy left for her. I know she might try to file for partial custody in the future, and I'm prepared for that battle. Right now though, I'm just trying to do what's best for my sons. Does that make me an asshole? Update I've received many requests for an update, so here it is, I did end up taking the new job and my sons and I moved. We've been settling into our new lives and things have been going incredibly well. My sons love the new house, they've made friends with kids in the neighborhood, and my job has been going great. I honestly couldn't have hoped for a better transition. I got both of my sons into a great therapy program, and we've been doing counseling sessions together. They've been adjusting amazingly well, and I'm so proud of how they've handled everything. We've also made two trips back to see their mother while she's still figuring out what she can do under her probation. We've also been doing video calls with her several times a week. My sons don't fully understand why their mom isn't here with us, but they seem to be grasping that this is their new normal. In contrast to how well my sons and I have adjusted, my ex is still struggling. She's angry with me and thinks I'm a complete jerk for moving. She's frustrated with the court process to be allowed to move, frustrated that I'm not willing to drive our sons back to see her as often as she'd like, and feels marginalized in their lives. She claims I'm pulling them away from her. During our last visit I reminded her that these consequences are a result of her own actions, and she blew up at me accusing me of kicking her when she's already down and taking her sons away from her. I told her how well our sons are doing, how happy they are, and that she should be proud of how strong and resilient they've been. 
She then started begging me to move back, saying she's not sure the courts will allow her to move and that the process is taking too long. I told her that wasn't going to happen, but if there's anything I can do to help with the court process, I'd be willing to assist. I also reminded her that I haven't mentioned her not paying the court-ordered child support, but our boys are in a much better place now, and I'm not going to take that away from them. Every time we have a video call, as soon as she says goodbye to our sons, she starts asking me to consider moving back home. I tell her every time that it's not happening. I'm not a robot, I do feel bad seeing her so desperate and distraught. But when I see my sons playing and laughing with their new friends, I know I made the right decision, no matter the cost to my ex. For Thanksgiving, I made the drive back to my ex's place so she could spend the holiday with our sons. While there, we talked about Christmas plans, and I told her that due to potential winter weather and the pandemic, I'd prefer not to make the long drive again for Christmas. She didn't take it well, and accused me of isolating her from the kids. This was after I had just driven hundreds of miles to spend Thanksgiving with her and the boys. I told her that it wasn't up for debate and that we could plan something for the spring once the weather warmed up and the pandemic situation improved. Even though I wasn't planning to drive back, I made sure to FaceTime with her and the kids on Christmas Eve and promised to do the same on Christmas morning, so she could see them open the gifts she had sent. But when I tried calling her on Christmas morning, she didn't answer. I tried several more times, but the calls went unanswered, and eventually, it went straight to voicemail. Then, around dinner time, the doorbell rang. It was my ex. My sons were, of course, excited to see her, but I had a serious, what the hell, moment. For a split second, I thought about not letting her in, but the boys were so thrilled to show her all their new toys that I couldn't turn her away. Once things settled down, I asked her what she was doing there. She said she couldn't handle a Christmas away from her kids, so she made the drive to see them. I told her it was messed up that she didn't tell me she was coming, but she said she knew I would have told her not to come. I asked if she got the okay from her probation officer, and she assured me she had. She then asked if she could stay the night since she didn't have a hotel book and I reluctantly let her stay in the guest room. Later that night, before going to bed, I sent an email to her probation officer to confirm that she had permission to travel. Since it was Christmas weekend, I didn't hear back right away, and my ex left the next day to head back home. A couple of days later, I got an email from the probation officer thanking me for reaching out and asking for more information which I provided. Then, I received a furious phone call from my ex. She was screaming at me, calling me an asshole for contacting her probation officer. Apparently, she hadn't told them about her trip and now faced potential jail time for violating her probation. She accused me of trying to get her sent back to jail so I could keep the kids away from her permanently. That was never my intention, but I can see why it looks that way to her. Does contacting her probation officer make me an asshole? Thank you for listening to today's story. Have a nice day.